Hello everyone, good morning. In this video, I will be helping you to solve some neat examination questions with their proper answers and best possible explanations. So let us start with our first question. This first question is from chemical kinetics and it goes as if the rate constant for a first order reaction is k, the time t required for completion of 99% of the reaction is given by and the four options are given. Now, what we need to understand in this particular type of question is it is the relationship between rate constant and the time and that is nothing but the integrated rate equation for the first order reaction. So, what you need to know is the expression of the integrated rate equation of the first order reaction, which is this. That is the integrated rate equation for first order reaction, where k is the rate constant, t is the time, r0 is the initial concentration and r is the concentration at time t. Now, what is given in the question is 99% of the reaction is completed or the time at which 99% of the reaction will be completing. So if 99% of the reaction is completed, how much is left? Now since initial concentration is not given and we know that initial concentration is R0, we designate it by R0. So we can say that R in third bracket, which means the concentration at time T when the 99% of the reaction is completed, how much will be left at that much time? Only 1% of initial concentration is left because 99% has completed. So how much is left is 1%, right? Now 1% means 1 by 100 of R0. So if we substitute that value in the expression, the value of R, so what we'll get is the expression then T equals to 2.303 by K log R0 by 1 by 100 of R0. That is what we have substituted the value of R r naught and r naught get cancelled what is left is log 100 now log 100 is 2 if you multiply it by 2.303 what you'll get is 4.606 divided by k so if you try to see it will be option 3 so that is how we need to solve it so this type of questions are very common so what you need to understand is you need to remember the integrated rate equation for first order as well as for zero order so that this type of solving becomes easy. Now the next question is from mole concept. The number of moles of hydrogen molecules required to produce 20 moles of ammonia through Haber process is and the four options are given. Now those of you who are not clear about mole concept, please watch the video. One of the video which I have uploaded is talking about or is the explanation of mole concept. So do watch that video then you can solve this problem much easily or this type of problems. So if you see what they have asked is is the Haber's process. Now the preparation of ammonia through Haber's process is one of the very common uh, reaction which you do in your class 12. So let us try to see what is that reaction. So it is this 2 N2 plus 3 H2 gives us 2 NH3. Now we can clearly see from the uh, expression is that when two moles of ammonia is produced three moles of hydrogen is required you can clearly see three moles of hydrogen is required for two moles of ammonia therefore to produce 20 moles of ammonia how much of hydrogen will be required it is 3 by 2 into 20 is it not simple case when two moles requires or two moles of ammonia requires three moles of hydrogen 20 will require it's like unitary method so when you solve that 3 by 2 into 20 which gives you 30 moles which will be option 3 again. So again to understand this type of problems your concept of mole or mole concept has to be very clear and to do that please watch the video on mole concept which I have uploaded. The next question is from the chapter solution and it's about ideal solution. So it's a very direct question. What you need to know is the condition for a solution to be ideal. So for an ideal solution, the correct option is, then they have given various options. 
Now, if you try to see the condition for ideality or ideal solution, what you'll find is there are three. There are others also, but three important are it obeys Raoult's law at every range of concentration. Delta H mix will be equal to zero. That means neither heat is evolved nor absorbed during the dissolution. And delta V mix will be equal to zero. That is total volume of the solution is equal to the sum of the volumes of the components. So if these three conditions are satisfied, then the solution becomes ideal. Now, if you try to match it with the options given, then what you see is option three is the correct answer. Delta H mix equal to zero at constant temperature and pressure. So that is that becomes our answer. So what is important here is to know what is the condition for ideal and non-ideal solutions. Now, the next question is about the structure, which is again from VACPR theory. In my previous video also, I have discussed one particular question from VACPR theory. This is again the same. So they have given us four uh, compounds of xenon and we need to get the four correct structures. Now, to get these structures, you have to have a very clear understanding of what VSEPR theory is. So, do know what is VSEPR theory, how to get structures by using VSEPR theory. It is very important, very common questions in your entrance examinations also. So, if you draw the structures of the four compounds of xenon which are given, then XeO3 will be pyramidal. X E O F four will be square pyramidal, X E F six will be distorted octahedral, and X E F four will be square planar. So let us move into the next. Now this is from solid state, and this type of question again is very common, where you need to find the formula of a solid by using the uh, number of cations or anions or the number of elements which are occupying the percentage of octahedral and tetrahedral void. Very common questions. So let us try to see. A compound is formed by cation C and anion A. The anions form hexa hexagonal close packing, packed HCP lattice and the cations occupy 75% of the octahedral voids. The correct formula of the compound is, so the four options are given. Now, very important thing in this type of uh, questions, whether in your board or whether in your entrance examination, you must be able to find out which of the element or ions or atoms, whatever is given so that they are packed and give you a particular solid, which of them is packed. Remember that all of them will not be packed. One of them will be packed and the others will be occupying the void. So you have to be very clear which is packed and it is clearly said in the question that the anions form hexagonal close packed lattice. So the anions is forming the lattice and the cations occupies the void. So cations are not getting packed. So the packing is actually happening with A and the cations once it actually or anions once it forms the uh, hexagonal close packing then the cations goes into the void. Now there is a particular uh, relationship between the voids and the uh, or the number of uh, elements or atoms or ions packed or the particles packed with the number of voids. Now that is, let us say that the number of anions be 100 since it is not given and you can take it to be n also, you can take it to, to, take it to be 1000 also. It be taking 100, it becomes very easy to deal with percentage. That's why I'm taking 100. That's the easiest way to deal with percentage. The Therefore, number of octahedral voids will be 100. Now that is actually the relationship between the octahedral voids and the number of particles packed. Here the anions are packed and we are saying it's 100 and remember that the number of particles packed in a solid will be equal to the number of octahedral void present in that particular solid. So the number of octahedral voids is equal to the number of particle packed in close packing. And for tetrahedral void it's twice the number of octahedral void. So that means if you have 100 number of particle packed, there will be 100 number of octahedral void and 200 number of tetrahedral void. It will always be twice, okay, for tetrahedral and for octahedral, it will be always be the same number as the particles are packed. So I am assuming that it is 100, so the number of octahedral void has to be 100. 
Now we know that all the 100 voids are not occupied. There comes our condition which is given in the question 75% of the void is occupied. That's why I have taken it 100 so that getting 75% of 100 becomes very easy that is 75. Okay. Taking other values will also do but that is the simplest way of dealing with such problems. So 75% of 100 that is the number of cations because it is occupying that is nothing but 75. So the number of cation is 75. M number of anions we have supposed it to be 100. So what is the ratio of cation and anion that is 75 is to 100. If I multiply by 4 75 into 4 is 300 70, uh, 100 into 4 is 400 which if I'll take common, which I'll get as 3 is to 4. So what will be the formula? C is of 3 numbers, A is of 4 number. It is C3A4. So that will be the formula of the solid. So that is how you have to deal with such problems. So important points for solving such problem is you need to know which particle is packed. Assume it to be a particular number, 100 or N, according to your convenience. You have to know that the number of particle packed will be always equal to the number of octahedral voids present and the number of tetrahedral void present in the system will always be twice the number of octahedral voids. So these are some important points which you need to remember for solving such problems which are very common in your entrance examinations. So thank you everyone. Do watch the latest video which will be uploaded in the channel. Thank you very much.